Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to automatically refresh the data on your page using JavaScript. So let's just say, for example, you've got some sort of table on your page and you want to automatically refresh this table with new data every 30 seconds or every two minutes. Whatever it might be, if you've got a situation like that, I'm going to be showing you how to do it in today's video. Now also keep in mind that I'm going to be showing you essentially two versions of this solution. The first one is going to be an easy, simple solution that you can just chuck in and it's going to work as is. But the second solution is going to expand upon the first one and make it a little bit more advanced. You're going to be able to activate uh, the refresh and also deactivate it as well as sort of um, just having more control over um, the actual process of refreshing that data. So if you are interested, I highly recommend you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be showing you some uh, pretty intermediate to advanced uh, techniques uh, to make that happen. So it's a good learning experience also. Now, the example used in this video is going to be this table right here, a table of users, ID, username and country. This is going to be populated from a JSON file, which looks like this, okay? Three users, ID, username and country, going to simply use JavaScript to take those properties out and populate a row for, you know, a row in the table for every single user, okay? Now, the HTML looks like this. I've got that table with an ID of users, okay? I've also got in the JavaScript file two functions. The first function is going to use the fetch API to fetch the user's JSON file. Then it's going to simply interpret that as JSON and return it. Now I assume you have a similar setup on your existing project. If not, I recommend you use the fetch API and um, get the data to come back. The second function here is going to take a list of users as an array. Okay, so basically this array right here, it's going to take it, then it's going to populate each row of, sorry, it's going to populate a new row inside the table for each user. So a simple for loop here for every user, make a new table row. But of course, before that also clear it. So next time it's going to refresh uh, cleanly. So that is the two existing functions on the page, which you probably have already if you're using JavaScript to make an API call or a JSON call and populate the data on your page. Now, you don't need to be using a table, but the point is you've got a retrieval function and a update the UI function, okay? Now, how do we then call this to make it work? Well, we can just say here, get users. Then I can say dot then, okay? Because of course, get users returns a promise then I can grab onto the users like this and then simply say uh, update users table and pass in the users array. I'll save this, go back in the browser here and we get the expected results in the table. So the users are going to update. Now, how do we make this automatically refresh every 30 seconds? Well, let me show you how it's done. So going back inside this code here, we're going to be creating a new function called auto refresh. This function is going to handle the automatically refresh of the data logic. So we're going to say here, const auto refresh is equal to a new arrow function. Okay. Now this function is going to accept an object as the only parameter. And we're going to use object destructuring here to take out three properties. We want to have a data function, a on complete function, and an interval value equal to 30,000 by default. So the data function means what function needs to be called to retrieve the data. In our case here, it's the get users function. Okay. On complete is what function executes once the data is back and completed. So once the operation has been completed, the fetch calls come back what happens? Well, that's the on complete function. In this case, we want to update the UI. Okay. The interval is how many uh, seconds or milliseconds between each operation. Uh, I've got 30 seconds or 30,000 milliseconds as the default here. But you can, of course, provide whatever you want. Okay. It's up to you. So how do we then, you know, 
call this function for our own get users scenario here? Well, we can just hop down and we can say auto refresh. We're gonna take an object into it and because we used object destructuring, VS Code is going to automatically give us the list of suggested properties. Let's provide a data function. The data function is gonna be get users, okay? The on complete is going to be update users table and the interval will make it two seconds. That way I can show you in the video and you don't have to wait too long. I can now get rid of this top get users call and we can only focus on the bottom half here. So of course, if I save this, go back in the browser, nothing is going to work. So let's implement the auto refresh function. What it's going to do is it's going to have a piece of code that executes um, on an interval of whatever you provide. So this code can be contained within a function. We're gonna say const execute is equal to, then have this as a function, all right? Then when you first call auto refresh, it's gonna call that execute function, all right? This function is gonna fetch the data, then call the onComplete function, all right? So we're gonna say here, data function, okay, dot then. Once the data comes back, we're going to simply call onComplete and provide it with the data, all right? Now, if this here doesn't make too much sense, I'm gonna explain it uh, very shortly in a bit more detail, but if we go back in the browser here, we can see it now works. So going back inside VS Code, what's happening here? Well, as we know, the get users function returns a promise because we're using the fetch API. So this returns this fetch API call, transforms the data from JSON into a JavaScript array, okay? And that is why we're able to say data function dot then. It's the exact same thing as just saying get users dot then. It's the exact same thing. We're just passing the function into the auto refresh as opposed to calling it directly, right? So once the data comes back from the user's call, we get the users in the form of this data property here. Then we're just saying, look, let's call the onComplete function. Again, we're passing in the update users table, which means onComplete and passing in data is just like calling update the users table like we did earlier and passing in the users, right? It simply forwards the data on. I can prove this by saying console.log the data, save this back in the browser, and the data is indeed the list of users. Okay, so that's how that works, right? Now, how do we get this to execute every 30 seconds? Well, great question. We can simply say set timeout underneath the on complete. Then we're gonna say execute every interval, okay? So this just means after this amount of milliseconds, so in this case here, 2000, after 2000 milliseconds or two seconds, we're gonna execute the execute function again. So it's gonna call itself and run the exact same code again. And that is how we're able to uh, achieve the interval every X amount of milliseconds, do this, okay? Save this back in the browser and we can see in the console, because I've got a console message inside the update here, we can see the users table is being updated every two seconds. We have a seven, then we have eight, okay? It's being executed uh, every two seconds. If I go in the network tab, we can see indeed that uh, yeah, this JSON file is being fetched every two seconds here. So that is your simple example, guys. That's an easy way to go about doing this. Now, if you like, you don't really need to have a separate function for um, your data function. You can, of course, just, for example, I'll take this users function here. I'll get rid of this part and remove the constant and then simply hop down here and provide the function uh, directly like this, it's still gonna work, right? Save this back in the browser, and it still works. And the same goes for the 
update table. I can just take this function and I can put it inside here directly. If that's your thing, it's up to you. But that is your simple example. So now how do we go about improving this so we can activate or deactivate it um, whenever we want, all right? Well, we're gonna do this using closures and a return object and other callback functions and so on. So let me show you how this is going to work. Basically, we have this auto refresh call, right? We're actually gonna say const uses refresher, okay? Not the best name for this, but the point is that this users refresher is responsible for refreshing the users, okay? We can see here that we have a constant and we're calling the function, we're assigning it that value, but this function doesn't actually return anything. So what's happening here? Well, we do need it to return something. So down here, we can say return, all right? And we're gonna be using a JavaScript setter, okay? We're gonna say set active. It's gonna take in a Boolean value, all right? This here is gonna be responsible for activating or deactivating the refresher. So basically, if I say users refresher dot, uh, dot active is equal to false, I want it to stop refreshing. If I set it to true, I want to then continue resetting, sorry, refreshing. So it's kind of like a pause and resume kind of thing, right? Let's just stop here, right? I now want to go down here and I just want to say users refresher dot. And now we can see, we can say activate. Activate, sorry, active, okay? Active equal to false. I can do this now, right? It's valid. So I'm going to be showing you this on the fly in the browser console. Um, but the point is here, if I was to now say console.log and I can log out B, save this back in the browser here. If I now grab onto that users refresher, I can say dot active is equal to true as an example. And we get true right there. Okay. I can say equal to false and we get false. So that's how we're able to grab onto that value, which we put inside B. Now to get this to work, we must store the current state of the refresher inside the function. We're gonna say, let active equal to true. By default, when you call the auto refresh, it is gonna be active, okay? The next change is gonna be inside the dot then, okay? We must say, look, if it is currently active, then run the set timeout. So in other words, once the data comes back, only if this refresher is still active, we want to then call it again. Of course, this makes sense, right? If it's deactivated, we wanna stop and don't call it again until we activate it again, right? So only call the function again if it is currently active, okay? So this makes sense to me. Uh, we can actually go inside the setter now and we can say active is equal to B. Now, Keep in mind that I happened to call this variable the same name as this setter, but they are separate. If you want to, you could rename this to be underscore active. I might just do that for clarity purposes. So I'll just say underscore active, right? Just so it's clearer. Um, but the point is, yeah, we're simply setting that variable inside here. If I save this, go back in the browser, it's gonna refresh every two seconds as we can currently see. Two, three, Four and it's working. If I say users refresher dot active is equal to false, what's gonna happen? Well, I press that and we get it one more time, but that's it. So it stopped running. The reason why we got it one more time is because it was in the process of still having the set timeout, but once this one completed, it saw that active was no longer true, okay? So it didn't go ahead and say set time out again and call it again. So this right here is working, but how do we now make it work the other way around? So if I say active equal to true, how do I get it to restart the uh, interval? Well, we can do this by simply going inside the setter once again and just saying if B, then we're gonna call the execute function once again, right? If I save this, go back in the browser here, 
I can now say active equal to false to of course cancel it as we can see there. Um, and we can now say active equal to true and we can see that it's going to reset and it's going to start updating the user table again. Let's do it a few more times here just to see what happens and you can see that this thing keeps on running at a much higher frequency. We get, we're already at 32 refreshes. So what's happening here is basically we are not uh, clearing the timeout and we're not managing that timeout interval, sorry, that timeout identifier, which means that, yeah, we're just, we're, we're continually calling set timeout um, and I can call this multiple times and it's going to run execute again. Therefore, we get the, uh, yeah, the really quick refreshes. So to get around this bug, we need to start managing the set timeout. So basically, we only want to have a single one of these going at once. So let's get a reference to the timeout ID so we can clear it when saying active equal to false. Let's say let timeout right at the top here, then say if active, Time out is equal to set timeout. So now, of course, we've got a reference to the timeout itself, so the ID for that one. And we can now say, look, if not B inside the set active, then we're going to clear the timeout. Okay, so provide uh, the timeout ID. This here is just going to prevent it from uh, continuing to run even after I say active equal to false because like you would have seen just before, when I say active equal to false, it still executes right after it. So to prevent that, we can say clear timeout. Also, more importantly, timeout equal to null. So once we've cleared it, let's get rid of it. So now this thing knows if there's a pending execution or pending um, yeah, run of this. So we can say if B, and not timeout, then run execute. And this here is basically all we need. If I save this, go back in the browser, it's gonna start running. Let's say active equal to false, right after a execution, so six, press enter. There is no seventh update users table. So we're stopping that execution, right? That's what the clear timeout does. Now that the timeout's equal to null, this condition is going to pass, this if right here. So if I say active equal to true, it's going to update the users table and continue as per normal. Now let's set it to false once again. And yeah, it's still going to work, guys. Um, do it again and it's fine. So Let's try setting it to true and then setting it to true once again. What's going to happen here is nothing actually changes. So we can see if I run it, it's not going to interrupt the interval. It's not going to run it straight away. It's all going to work uh, smoothly. And that true is going to have no real effect because none of these conditions are going to pass. Now, real quick, one thing I forgot to mention was that it's actually preferable to, inside your uh, dot then here, move the on complete within the if active. This way, your um, if your request fires off and it's taking like five seconds to come back, then you say active equal to false before it comes back from uh, the server, then the on complete won't be called and you won't get the UI updated. So that's if your requests are slow, like I said, but you're definitely just better off here wrapping this whole thing inside an if active to get a more clean, um, you know, result when you say active equal to false. So that right there is how to automatically refresh your data on the page um, every 30 seconds or whatever it might be. Um, if this video helped you out and you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.